Greetings all. Last Outrider here, continuing with Who Are the Black Legion, Part 3, The Horus Heresy. Now, there's probably a hundred Horus Heresy videos on YouTube, but you're not going to find one like this. So enjoy. The Horus Heresy. Rejoicing in his Primarch's restoration, Abaddon did not question the dark moods and cruel temper now manifest within Horus. Only when the War Master began to speak of the Emperor's betrayal and how he had abandoned his legions did Abaddon see the deep hatred that festered in Horus's heart. These feelings found fertile ground within Abaddon who had always harbored contempt for those from the other legions, and needed little excuse to see them as foes. When Horus finally turned on the emperor in open rebellion, Abaddon eagerly swore to lead his forces to the gates of Terra itself. Whilst a handful of space marines within the sons of Horus questioned the wisdom of turning against the Emperor, most followed their Primarch without question. This was not mere chance, but the hand of Horus himself, who had spent his years as War Master, cementing his position within the Great Crusade and removing dissenting voices from his followers. Such was the sons of Horus' devotion to their Primarch, that the ruinous powers found willing servants within their ranks, and many fell to the vile influence of the warp. During the heresy that followed, Abaddon made a brutal name for himself as both a peerless warrior and ruthless general. In the name of the War Master, Abaddon sanctioned the murder of innocents and the burning of worlds. On Istvan III, after Horus virus-bombed the Loyalists from his own legion, along with those of the Emperor's children, World Eaters, and Death Guard, Abaddon and his company attacked the survivors across the scorched and rotting corpse of the planet space marines waged a war of betrayal and retribution battle brothers that had only days before had broken bread and sparred and training smashed each other asunder abaddon took a savage joy in facing his former brothers in combat ripping them apart and making a bloody example of them to the dark gods. The Horus Heresy quickly became a terrible war of escalation and retaliation. The legions struck desperate blows against each other across the length and breadth of the nascent Imperium, by the time Horus had carved a bloody path to Terra, the sons of Horus stood at the head of a vast army of traitor space marines. In a battle, the likes of which the Imperium has never since seen, Horus' armies fell upon the Emperor's palace and Abaddon was granted the honor of leading them into battle. This was to be the zenith of the sons of Horus' power. Never again would the legion gather in such strength or grandeur on the field of battle. In the cauldron of war, Abaddon led the first company and the hulking, black-armored Terminators 
of the Justarian into the Emperor's palace, smashing through the Loyalist defenders, their chain fists and power swords dripping with gore. Any who dared stand against them were torn apart. Everywhere, the fires of the heresy burned out of control. Titans traded blows over the ruined walls of the palace, and great warships filled the sky with dizzying lance fire, raining bombardment upon friend and foe alike. The war master falls. Horus watched the battle unfolding below from the shrouded bridge of his flagship, the Vengeful Spirit. On flickering holo charts, the war master saw his armies trapped against the inner walls of the Emperor's palace. Loyalist Reinforcements arriving with every passing hour. Through the vista panes of his bridge, he could see that the space battle was also turning against his fleet. Horus knew time was running out. In his arrogance and anger, the war master made one last gambit. Lowering his ship's void shields so that the Emperor could face him personally. He was not to be disappointed. In an incandescent blast of light, the Emperor himself teleported onto the vengeful spirit, seeking out his traitorous son. The battle between the Emperor and Horus echoed through the Immaterium. The two great warriors exchanging titanic ringing blows even as their psychic selves struggled in the warp. For all his rage and anger, Horus could not win. Though before the Emperor obliterated his son's soul, Horus delivered a mortal blow to his gene father. Abaddon was climbing over the heaped corpses of broken imperial soldiers when he felt the psychic howl heralding the death of his Primarch. Every son of Horus knew at once that their war master had fallen. Thousands of warriors paused in battle to look up into the burning sky. The news spread like a contagion through the traitor legions, and the assault that had come so close to success began to collapse. Abaddon immediately teleported back onto the flagship and arrived at his master's side in time to rescue Horus's body. With a cry of deepest pain and anguish, Abaddon vowed vengeance against his father's killer, tearing free the lightning claw from Horus's arm. He fixed it to his own symbolically taking up his Primarch's debt of blood against the Emperor. Realizing the battle for Terra was lost, Abaddon moved to save the Legion from annihilation. He fought his way through the remaining Loyalists on the Vengeful Spirit and cleared the ancient vessel of resistance. The mortally wounded Emperor, already borne back to Terra by Rogel Dorn, laying claim to the vengeful spirit. 
Abaddon and the sons of Horus broke orbit and fought their way free of the battle and escaped into the void. A time of reprisal and retribution known as the Scouring followed. And countless worlds were put to death by the loyalists for siding with Horus. Their corpses left as a warning to others. Those traitor legionaries that remained in the Imperium were hunted mercilessly and hounded across the stars by pitiless loyalists. Abaddon and the remaining sons of Horus took refuge in the Eye of Terror, choosing to plunge into the maelstrom of madness rather than face extinction at the hands of the Emperor's vengeful warriors. There you go. That, my friends, is a tale of the Horus Heresy. I don't think you've heard before. And next time, if that's not enough, you will hear about the rise of the Black Legion. But until then, bye.